The name's Bond. Jimmy Bond. Licensed to serve alcoholic beverages on the premises. Oh, wow. Welcome to Beer Club. It's time for another Blade Cake review here on Beer Club. The previous video that we did on this proved out to be very popular. I had quite a number of views for that, and uh, funnily enough, as we're recording this, um, they've released Strongbow Dark Fruits on the uh, on the Blade, which just goes to show sometimes that there's no accounting for taste. Um, maybe I will review that at some point when my uh, when my um, eldest son comes home from Newcastle. He uh, he does like his uh, his dark fruits. It's uh, probably not something I would choose myself, but it's it's there for people that want it. But anyway, you don't want to hear about that. You want to hear about what we are going to review here today. Well, we've had a restock in the Mabba's Tavern and we ordered ourselves some more beer amaretti in for the Blade, which we reviewed on the previous video. This time, though, we've also got ourselves a Al Elderwise Wheat Beer, which we're going to review on today's show, along with some Desperados. But first, we've gone and put ourselves a Heineken keg into the machine. This is, of course, the signature beer of the Heineken brand and, of course, of the Blade machine itself. So it was going to be inevitable that we were going to review this at some point. Okay, so we've only just put this keg into the uh, into the machine. Um, we've poured out uh, a nice pint here. Uh, in the glass, we're getting a uh, a light golden straw colour with some slow-moving carbonation. Um, not much of a head on this, but again, that's probably because the keg has only just recently been loaded into the machine. Um, on the aroma, there's a pleasant malty smell with what seems like a hint of lemon. Nice and simple. So let's dive in and have a taste. We're getting a biscuity, bready taste. Uh, there's that hint of lemon again. It's crisp and refreshing. It's, yeah, it's, it's really pleasant. It's a really drinkable beer. Um, on the back end, there's a lovely, sweet, sort of biscuity aftertaste that lingers in your mouth afterwards. Uh, lovely stuff, very, very pleasant. It's a good uh, sessionable lager, is this. Uh, one that you'd quite comfortably drink all afternoon on a sunny day like this. Um, it's not as cold as it would normally be, but once again, that's probably because the keg has only just been put into the machine, as I'm going to demonstrate in a moment. Because you see, um, I thought it would be useful this time for this um, for this second video on the uh, on the blade that we actually demonstrate to you how to change a keg. So that's that's coming up next. Um, so back to the Heineken uh, again, because you've ordered a keg of this. It's going to be a beer that comes directly from the Dutch brewery itself and it's not the stuff that's going to be brewed over here in the UK. So this version of Heineken is going to be a far superior version to what you get in a can or a bottle. So, how do you change your keg? Well, let's, let's move on to that. Um, as with the perfect draft machine, you're not having to worry about cleaning out the beer line uh, whenever you change a keg, as each one already comes with its own line attached. So you're literally taking out an old one and putting the new one in. It's as simple as that. There's no messing about, there's no cleaning. Uh, and although you can't send these blade kegs back to Beer Wolf for some money back, like you would with Perfect Draft kegs and Beer Hawk, you are getting it where the blade kegs are going to be sort of cheaper than the perfect draft ones to begin with, and you are getting uh, a few extra sort of pints of beer in there. And in terms of recycling it, these just pop into your recycling bin, so it's very easy to um, dispose of these um, in a way that's safe for the environment. So the first thing you need to do to this keg, particularly important, is to push this orange button down. That's what's going to unlock it. So many people forget to do this first simple step before they put the keg into the machine, and then they're wondering why the hell they aren't getting any beer coming through. So make sure you do that. Then you pop the keg inside the machine like so, making sure that your beer line is poking out at the front. Make sure that the orange nozzle has been fitted into this orange gap. Don't forget to take the red cap off your beer line and pull this orange spout into the open position. As again, this is another frequent problem that people have 
when they're first fitting in a keg, and then they're wondering why the beer won't stop pouring out. Yes, this happened to us at first when we were recording this episode, so look out for bloopers at the end. So here's a handy little diagram that I came across that showing you what you'll need to do. I'll just pause here for a second and then you can take a, a screenshot of it for future, a future reference. Uh, but the main thing to remember is pushing the, push the uh, orange button, take off the red cap and make sure to pull out the orange spout into the open position. Lock this beer line into the tap. Next you're having to flick the switch to lock the keg back into position. You should hear a noise to let you know that this is in place and it started cooling down the keg. Close up the tap, drop the dome back into place, and that's it, you're done. Now it's probably a little more fiddly changing a keg on the blade than what it is on the perfect draft machine. As you can see, we did have a little mishap. Uh, but then again, that's likely because I'm still used to the blade, I'm still getting used to it, and I'm still trying, sort of trying to get the hang of it. Whilst with the perfect draft, I've had this for two years, and I can now change a keg on that in pretty much under five minutes. In fact, I've even demonstrated on numerous occasions on Beer Club how to change a keg on perfect draft. It's 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 very simple and straightforward. Well, I'm, I've, I've found it to be very simple and straightforward now having done it for two years. With the blade, yeah, it's a bit more fiddly at first, but I'm sure I'll get used to that as, as, we, uh, as we go on. Um, perhaps when I come around to doing another blade video, I'll be more used to it and I'll be able to show you again without quite so many mishaps. Anyway, enough chat. It's time for another beer review. Next up, we have a keg of Desperados. This is a Mexican-themed tequila-flavoured beer with a hint of lime. In the glass, it's a golden amber colour with a gentle amount of carbonation. Nice, compact two fingers of white foam head there. On the aroma, it's quite sweet and syrupy. We're getting hints of citrusy fruits, lemon and lime. Just a little bit malty on the nose there. Uh, on the taste, it's very sweet. Uh, it might actually be a bit, a bit too sweet for some people's tastes. Um, there's a big hit of citrus at first. I mean, a big, a big hit. Um, you've got that hint of tequila in there as well, of course, before it then settles down to a sort of more malty taste that reminds you that you are indeed drinking a beer. And then it leaves behind a pleasant aftertaste in the mouth afterwards. The flavours are all bounced together very well. It's uh, very crisp and refreshing and it's very drinkable. It makes for a good body of beer, although again it might be a bit too sweet and syrupy for some. Either way, this is again a more impressive version of Desperados than the one you would get in a bottle. It's a good summer beer for a party or a barbecue in your garden. Uh, just be warned that it has an ABV of 5.9% and um, it certainly doesn't taste like a strong beer at all. It's not harsh or overpowering at all, but uh, that 5.9% might very well sneak up on you and your guests after you've had a few. Uh, but either way, I'll, I'll certainly be getting this in again. And then finally we come to what is, for me, the main event of this video. This is the Edelweiss. An Austrian-made German-style wheat beer. It's a bright golden yellow cloudy colour with about two fingers of foamy white head and uh, even though it's cloudy you can still see the carbonation rising from the glass. Uh, there's a sweet aroma of bananas and clove similar to what we've had before with uh, Left Blonde or Francis Carner or Ho Garden. Uh, I'm also getting uh, aromas of cinnamon, coriander and mixed spices as well. Basically what I'm, what I'm trying to say is this smells wonderful. Absolutely bloody wonderful. It's very, very inviting indeed. So with that in mind, let's dive in. It's uh, very smooth on the taste. We're getting uh, lovely, sweet, banana, clovey flavours coming through. There's a very sweet, refreshing aftertaste with not too much bitterness at the back, which, again, leads to a great mouthfeel afterwards, which just makes you want to have another taste. It's a little heavier than the other two that I've reviewed here on this video, but you'd probably expect that with it being a, a wheat beer. Um, for me, and I know that I've only reviewed five kegs for this machine so far, but uh, this is the best beer on the blade so far. 
it's absolutely wonderful and I'll definitely be ordering this in again. So that is it for another episode of Beer Club. Uh, look out for more reviews coming soon for the Blade and the Perfect Draft Machine. Um, I'll also likely do another video soon where I'm going to be comparing a well-known brand of beer to the cheeky copycat versions that Aldi put out and somehow managed to get away with. If you have enjoyed this video then please do leave a like and a comment. Uh, be sure to check out some of my other videos as well. Please also consider sharing this video across all your various social media related gubbins, in particular anything that's got anything to do with craft beer, real ale, pub sheds, man caves. Um, beer machines, anything like that in general. And uh, do be sure to subscribe to the channel as well to see future videos just like this one. But until next time, thank you very much for stopping by the Mabbers Tavern and we'll catch you again next time. Like I said, look, look for the Whoops. Oh shit, what? Won't it stop? Oh bollocks. Why?